we're gonna find out about you guys, find out where you're at, right? And so as, as honest as you can be with where you are in your game, the more we'll be able to help you find the true path of what you have to do to get the women of your dreams. It really is a series of uh, proficiencies that if you can become proficient at a series of waypoints or a series of tasks, you'll get a consistency in your game that is just extraordinary. Uh, it's, it's like punching at a wall or uh, punching at a, a board. You don't focus on the board, you focus through the board, right? In order to get through it. So that's how I see pickup as well. There's this momentum that's needed. Well, what I recommend people do if they live in small towns yeah. is do a special weekend where they get out to one of the bigger cities mm -hmm. and go game for three days straight, nice. you know? Yeah. Even, even if you do it once a month. Uh, yeah. yeah. Once just, a month, get just in get, there. Get your special social weekend right. uh, out of the way so that you can meet yeah. several people, get some numbers, and convince them to come and visit you. Yeah, nice. The number one best narrative to a pickup, in my opinion, is turning your target, or the new, the new girl, into a travel partner. That is the game plan. That is, an, that's how you do solid game. You get to live with the person pretty much immediately, mm. right? If you if you have a travel partner with the, with the girl. Right. Now, what I suggest is you start small. It starts with moving the set into a sit down situation. Does mm -hmm. she move with you? Well, you've got a little bit of compliance. If you say, I'm gonna introduce you to some good friends of mine, don't be an ass, come join me. Right. You're now moving her 30 feet to a previously open group. Did she do that? You got compliance. If you say, let's go get gum, yeah. and she's gonna leave the venue and go to the nearby convenience store to grab gum with you, and she arrives safely back, trust has been established, yeah. and she's turning into a travel partner. You get it? Yeah. So we need to have a narrative arc from meeting a girl to beginning a sexual relationship. There's this timeline, and we're gonna be reviewing this timeline constantly because there are phases that take place in this timeline, right? We're gonna meet the objectives of these phases with material to get from phase to phase to phase, right? And there's also a good 30 different places where you can screw up. Yeah. So we're gonna find out, hopefully tonight, and not tomorrow, hopefully tonight, we're all gonna work some sets. Yeah. Hopefully the universe is gonna provide some opportunities, and I get to see you perform in field and see what the sticking points really are yeah. when it's all said and done, right? For sure. Uh, I'm no judge, I'm a dude. I'm just gonna watch you guys game. Uh, you watch me game too, watch us game. We're gonna interact with people. We don't know who they are just yet. We don't know how it's gonna unfold, but an education will come out of it, right? Toronto definitely provides love a lot of social scenarios. Love it here, love it here. Yeah, he, he loves coming up here every year. I do, I do. So I'm my this top, is an annual top though. three favorite places to game. I think for anyone starting out or anyone that's deep in it, Toronto offers a wide range of venues, a wide range of people like difficulty, there's the really hot girls, there's the semi-decent girls, they're all nice. They're mm -hmm. all, you yeah. know, pushed through with nice and happiness, so it's yeah. it's different than LA, New York, Vegas, and Miami. You Which, know? by the way, are great venues too. For sure. Yeah. Those are, yeah. I, I kind of feel like this is training for those venues. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Like, before you, get, you go to Vegas, exactly. you exactly. can have a shit night in Vegas if you don't know how to run it properly, if you don't get to the right venues, if you don't open sets. If you get locked into the corner, right? No one puts baby in the corner. <laughs> if uh, if you don't have the social scenario around you, the pre-selection, for instance, women find you attractive when the women are around you. It's just one of those strange phenomenons that they're looking for something in a man, and whatever that is, if there are women around you, then you must have something. Pre-screened. Right? They're pre-screened. Pre -screened. They're looking. They're they're looking for someone in a man that other women see as well. So that's pre-selection. If you can demonstrate that you have pre-selection, women will find you attractive. Uh, that's just the nature of reality. She doesn't have time to meet everybody that comes up to her. She doesn't yeah. have time to meet everybody that talks to her. So having another girl do half the work for her. Mm -hmm. just, just the presence of women with you will convey value, yeah. right? So that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from scratch. It's gonna be 
Groundhog Day all over again until you get a set around you that will draw to the next group. We want to merge groups. So we'll get to, we'll get to that. Let's go around the room uh, first, though. Okay. Uh, tell us about yourself, brother. And, and to have some more potent material so that it actually creates reaction. Yeah. So that the girls get stimulated. Yeah. Rather than yeah. just... That's what just we do, right? Communicating. We, everything that we do, we, we do it for reaction. There's, there's a purpose to to pretty much everything I I do. It's all it's you're we're we're seeking right. It's like we're everything we're doing is based off you're trying to elicit some sort of reaction, right? It's either Usually you're, laughter. you're breaking compliance, you're you're building compliance, you're, you're doing oh, everything else. Said that that kind of just yeah. so that you get a reaction. We achieve them through gambits, we achieve them through stories, we achieve them through routines, but at the end of the day, if we can say something out of our mouths that just doesn't get absorbed in as, he's the fucking normal standard guy that just came through like everyone else, yeah, we yeah. win, yeah, we exactly. win. Yeah. So we just have to be different. Mm -hmm. If we be nothing else while we approach these sets, we have to be different. Because difference gives us a chance. If we're and just the same as every other guy, we, st we stand no shot. And difference is at a micro level. Mm -hmm. Literally, when you have a sound bite come out of your mouth, if, if she says, how are you? And you say, fine, how are you? You've already <laughs> just demonstrated lower yeah. value yeah, 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 by yeah. trying to get along with her, by giving her the sound bite that she's heard before. So I like to come up with unique sound bites. I think of myself as an introvert. For sure. I have introverted Absolutely. tendencies. Absolutely. And what I do is I then shit, shower, shave, get dressed, and go out and force it, yeah. you know? I force it, and it's worth forcing. Uh, the rewards are high. Uh, people forget just how hot these girls are. There are, like, we're, we're after some fine looking women. Uh, they're worth it. They're worth the, the several months of effort to get your skill set up to speed, you know? Real Being able to reel it in game. right in the now, yeah. get it done fast and not Dilly dally for ten minutes. You scale up the set. Yeah. Has, has that happened to you? I've. Uh, Where I've you're had, sitting, you're, you you go onto a bus, uh, onto a bus for instance, and there's a girl there, but you didn't spark up the conversation right in the first three seconds to make it look normal, like you're a talkative person. That's it. Instead, you waited ten minutes and then tried to to start the conversation. Yeah, I've done that Ooh, a million right? times. Yeah. So abiding by the three second rule will really help your learning curve. It's not just about, it'll help your set, it'll help the very next set, but it's more like an internal dialogue you're gonna have with yourself that's very short. You know, three seconds to go from here to there rather than 10 minutes of getting that approach anxiety to accumulate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off, Yeah. and you wanna have some yeah. more material that you can trust that uh, will put you into the on position. Fair. Perfect. Very good. Okay, what about you, man? Yeah, and I this is going to traumatize too, by the way. Oh, I know. You know, like a lot of people come to the game thinking, oh, all my problems will be solved when I have a girl in my life. You're going to have more problems. Like this, this is going to be a rich range of emotions. Uh, going out to public gatherings, just going out to a public gathering can traumatize because it's an overwhelm. It's like we're we're overly stimulated. We're not safe in our beds. We're, we're made to interact socially, but we're not made to interact socially with alcohol and loud music and right. exotic dancers and, and shot girls and everything else. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of stimulus right. for, for you to take in. So mm -hmm. it, it, it does traumatize in, in many ways. So yeah, so you were traumatized. Grade three, that's how it all started. Yeah. Getting a phone number in three minutes yeah. is worth the paper it's written on. It's called wood. It's worth yeah. nothing. It's, it's, it's worthless because she's not actually gonna see you again. To get a number, try to, you know, try to get it really fast. And you're like, oh, I did good, I got a number, right? As opposed to, no, I didn't instant date her. I didn't hang out with her for 40 minutes. It's gonna take 30, 40 minutes to get a phone number that's gonna stick. For and sure. so we have to fill 40 minutes of time. That's pickup. Pickup is filling 40 minutes of time. It's like a, doing a comedy act. It's what a, if you it's don't a have set. 40 minutes? Then you're gonna have to what get- What if she doesn't have 40 minutes? Convey enough value to establish what you yeah. do in forty minutes, and they'll if allow you're doing it, if she's a hired gun, and you're you have to do it in three minutes. One way you can do it is by showing her value by opening up an adjacent set, having a group of people around you, and then you can say to her, "I've got to get back to my friends," pointing back to a group of girls, mm -hmm. right? So she feels the value. 
So Pre-load, then you could do value, right? Then you could do a really fast close, a, a number close. But generally speaking, what we want to do is we want to play to win solidly. You can win the game of chess in only four moves. It's mm -hmm. possible. But that does not make you a chess champion. It just makes the opponent naive, right? So that fools me in the past. Before, fair. I think, right? So let's let's presume our game, just like a game of chess is eighteen to thirty five moves. It's it, it's a long game. Uh, let's presume that if we are going to see a girl, she's going to be worth doing everything it takes to get her. In other words, a nice narrative arc from meeting her to beginning a sexual relationship should have this whole storyline of of crisis that gets gets resolved and then the next crisis just like watching Star Wars right. there's a there's a narrative arc and we are the ones in control of that arc right there are waypoints that we want to hit there's qualifying the girl but when do you qualify the girl there's uh, there's negging the girl but there's a time and place to neg her oops something has to grab you know yeah the, when do you touch her uh, it can go it can go you can get lost very easily if you don't have a game that's all. I'm, I'm always proud of people to go in when they have no game plan. They have the guts to go in and just, just do. wing it, man, and hope some shit happens, some shit sticks. You know? They're, and it can. Hard. It can. And it can, because a it bad can. pickup's better than no pickup for and a, it can. a regular girl. But if girls are particularly beautiful and they're socially savvy, as, as they get to be when they're beautiful, they're mm -hmm. bombarded by so many guys, they get socially savvy. Once that happens, man, you game has to be on point, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the purpose of this weekend, in my opinion, isn't to give you one or two little tricks that'll that'll make you feel good, but rather get you onto the pathway of all the thirty different proficiencies that are necessary to play a solid game, to get the, the real, true, bona fide, beautiful girls, the smart ones, not just the little quick little bimbo ones. We're not, we're not. There's no shortcuts here. There's no shortcuts. You want high value girls, you gotta you gotta work for it. Yeah. You look at a lot of other companies and a lot of other guys that are into seduction and they're always posting their, their number closes, their kiss closes, all this kind of stuff with like some decently hot girls sometimes. What you fail to look at is that if you were to investigate a little further, those girls are never around in those guys' life past a week, past a month, past two months. Because most guys in the game have about two months of game. They got two months where they can build this character, they can meet mm -hmm. a girl, show her a lifestyle, and then, and then incongruencies happen. And then happen, incongruencies yeah. happen. It's, you know, you're not, you're not the guy you were, you were not as connected as you were, you're not social as you were, and all these things. So for us, it's not just, you know, going out and being able to show you guys a cool birthday weekend where, you know, everybody gets treated like a rock star. No, this is about getting the skills that's needed to get so that when you go home, you have a game plan on how to get yes. better for the next 30, 60, and 90 days so that you're not in this game for, you know, I know guys that have been in this game longer than I have and they're still not where, anywhere. Yeah, where, isn't it odd? Like, it's there odd. Are some it's guys odd. that have played this game for, they're, they're in five years and they haven't been laid in the last two. You know, like they're, it's, they're just in it. Yeah. Sounds like and my story. Does it, it happens. Does yeah, it happen? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll have to change, and yeah. and the way to make that change is by flooding yourself in with momentum. Mm -hmm. well, you know, let's do some sets. Let's actually go out and meet people, and let's find out what not to do. The pathway of what you should do will reveal itself. If we could teach you nothing new this weekend, but take away all the bad behavior right. that you guys are most likely doing, right. you guys will get laid. So. It's not enough to and just... It, and it isn't just to get laid, it's, it's a quality right. girl too. Right, You know? But uh, once they're hot, once you're going after the girls in Vegas, this is what we're preparing for, just think of it that way, is this weekend is just to practice the skill set, fail on these girls, mm -hmm. so that when a, a woman of particular quality comes along in the future, you'll have the technical savvy, the technical skill set to obtain her by playing a solid game. You know? It's perfect. My brother's bachelor party is in Vegas. And <laughs> there you go. Months. There you go. And you don't want to waste that, that weekend. <laughs> you know. Well, I went to the Playboy Mansion. And so I'm really glad that before the Playboy Mansion, mm -hmm. I had gone out a lot with my friends and I was already in the groove. Mm -hmm. So I cleaned house on that one weekend. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, I, and I could have gone the opposite is what I'm saying. You can find yourself spending thousands of dollars and getting your ass to... Playboy Mansion yep. and going home alone 
you know? Yeah. Polly Shore. <laughs> Polly Shore. <laughs> Polly Shore. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and we don't want to do that. So let's practice. Go over, like, uh, repetitiously. We'll go over this pickup uh, sequence so that you can recognize that it's a pickup, uh, a pickup artist is a performing artist. And so you are now performing artists. And your 40 minute set is your performance. That's it. If you can get good at 40 minutes, you're gonna get laid like a rock star. Sure. Now it really is about seven, seven hours in total, right. right? You need a day two, sometimes a day three. There's keno escalation, touching, right? How to touch properly. Right. The power of any touches in the roll off, we'll get into keno. Uh, in the power of getting her to chase you. That's the narrative. The best narrative is turning her into a travel partner and having her chase you. A girl cannot days, chase you. Chase a girl what cannot. Longer the days where you chase women. Right. Yeah, we're, mm -hmm. if, if I put my hand on her knee, she can take it off my knee. But if I take her hand, put it on my knee, I can push it off her and say, all right, you're losing okay. it. <laughs> you see the, the difference? Yeah. It's subtle, but in one way, I'm structuring the opportunity to be pursued because now I've already shoved, shoved her off first. Yeah, yeah, like that. Right? And the other way, you're standing there and you're never leaving, you're never giving any sort of gap or space, so she cannot be the person to first try to bridge the gap, right? right? So that's why I'm the guy who says, all right, slow it down, speed racer. Buy me a drink before you get on me. <laughs> I have a suspicion that you're being too nice. I think so. You're going yeah. in and you're trying to build Actually, rapport, and true. they're Canadian, yeah. so they're letting you. Yeah. And then where does that go? There's you no. haven't created <clears throat> the tension. There's where, the tension, yeah. See, in, in the second phase, in the first phase we open, but in the second phase, and I'll go through structure in a little bit. Uh, in the second phase, we build attraction, and in the third phase, we qualify the girl. But to prime her for qualifying, we actually have to build some tension in the second phase, in A2, in order to get her to want to qualify herself. Right. Right? So a lot of guys, what they do is they just go in comfort. They just try to get along with everybody. I yeah. think you may have this issue too. Is, is you're gonna go in, you're gonna get along with everybody, right? Or at least try. If someone is a, a, a prick to you, you may you know hold your own. But to actually instigate, to, to go in there and try to cause a ruckus, uh, it, it preempts their ruckus, you know? I can resolve the problems of getting drama from a girl, like shit tests and, and getting a drama from her, if I'm the first to instill drama into my set, right? So I have this suspicion that you're not playing that game. That's absolutely true. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I've played in Vegas, yeah. I've cleaned house, uh, when my girlfriend's away right now, I can talk about this. Uh, I've played in New, in New York City, certainly. Uh, some of those fine looking, tall, <laughs> slender people that, that, that I've forgotten. Uh, those hard to get girls. I've been to Miami, I've played in Miami. I lived there for a year, right? I've lived in Hollywood. So these are the places that I've, and, and over the last year I've been to Amsterdam and, mm -hmm. and really tasting. And Barcelona. Tasting Barcelona, uh, Helsinki is where I met Sauna, yeah. during boot camp actually. So I've traveled everywhere and I've done, I've, I've done some, some bigger game. But when it's all said and done, we're in Toronto right now, the best thing you can do is just run multiple sets and merge them together and start practicing your A2. Start practicing DHVing and negging. That's an entire phase um, qualifying. Because yeah. in A2, you, can, you DHV yourself, demonstrate higher value, trigger her attraction while simultaneously negging her, throw, giving her the distance so she can bridge it, right. then when you qualify her in A3, she feels compelled to qualify her, to want to qualify herself because of the negging that took place, right? So it's the same thing in every single set. It'll happen where you'll get along with everybody except one person, and that one person is the target. And this isn't something you're doing. You're, no. you're not choosing no. a target. No. You're going in and you're running a set for 10 minutes. You're seeing, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, if that. Whatever that is, they're smart, they're pretty, they're not a certain type of bimbo chick 
you know? They're all pretty though. Like I go after the girl who's really hot, who's surrounded by people, where there are guys in the set. If there are guys in the set, work it. Mm. Guys are ugly girls. You can work mixed sets. The hottest girls are in groups. You're gonna rarely see a girl by herself. So if you're only gonna open up groups by, the, by themselves, you, you're cutting your, your legs off, you know? You have to stand proper, work, I never, make sets. Rarely do I go to a group with guys in it. Okay, well let's expand, let's expand your skill set and let's get into that because if we, ever, if we were all gonna hop on a plane and go down to Vegas and go party up there, party down there rather, uh, yeah, you're gonna have to do make sets, man. Yeah. It's just fact. Hot girls are in groups. Yeah. And I those know. groups are gonna have guys in them. Guys are ugly girls. I know. I have you can, said you can open. <laughs> you can open these sets. It's surprising, because you think I'm gonna get beaten up, but you'll find out it's not the boyfriend. It's the brother. Did Wait. you always game while you had girlfriends, or most of the yeah. time? Yeah. You're always. You're yeah, always. I mean, the, the objective. The objective and what you take away from the interactions might be different. Yeah. But you're always gaming. There's routines, like, there's gambits, there's material, there's sound bites, there's everything that needs to be with good delivery, with good performance, mm -hmm. so that it works. Because I don't want her to look at me and be like, he's losing his touch. Mm -hmm. He's no longer social. He can't hang when we go out. When dudes come up to him, he doesn't know how to behave. When that guy hit on me, he didn't know how to react. When that chick hit on him, he didn't know how to react. So you're, I'm always working so yeah, that I the keep same, my girl. The same skill set that gets you the girl is supposed to keep you the girl. If you demonstrate to a girl that you don't have options with mm -hmm. other women, if your girlfriend thinks to herself, wow, if I leave him, he's not going to get another girl. He's with me from a lack of choice, lack of options. Then all of a sudden she's no longer attractive. So you have to, in order to keep a girl in your life, I'm sure this will yeah, and I was make say, ring plus, true. Uh, uh, she has, your sort of your wife has control to... control the power if they think that, right? Yeah, your wife has to know that you continue to have options. Like if you were to break up, if you were mm -hmm. to get divorced, then sometime in the next week, one of the other girls would say yes. Yeah. That's And if you don't have that, then you can lose your girl because there's no longer attraction, just based on that. Which is all silly, I'm not disagreeing with you on that part, it's silly, but it's fact. It's just the way the world works. So that's, that's takes a lot to, to come forward with all the- Yeah, the, honest, all the honesty. Sorry, thank you that, for that. that definitely appreciate it. goes it. nowhere. This, you know, this door's closed, it's just us guys. Um, but it gives me an assessment of, of where we're at because sure. we're going out tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight's gonna be uh, special <laughs> in that I'm gonna be watching you guys do some sets or we're both gonna be watching you, assessing from a distance. I'm not out to you know, rock the boat of your set, just do some sets. Mm -hmm. If I can see three sets, a pattern will form. Mm -hmm. I'll find out what sticking points that you have in those three sets that we can fix for the next three sets, mm -hmm. right? And over the course of three nights of doing this, we're gonna see some market improvement, right? Uh, so we're gonna be focused on the, on the front end, right? Because that's what this is about, cold approach pickup. Yeah. Uh, Good. But we're also going to wanna do groups. It isn't just like what you, you're doing, one set here yeah. and then back to your base with your drink and then next set, there's the next girl and then you're waiting for the next one. Yeah. I want the last set to be with me when I open the next set. I want to be surrounded by people when I open the very next set. I want that second set to see I'm already in set. I can't be blown out of that set because I didn't enter that set. I'm just talking loudly and I have people with me. And so that's part of the game is to create the first social uh, circle around you so that you look cooler and more approachable and less threatening as a guy, right? And more attractive so that you can attract nearby sets to come close and then you can, you know, over the shoulder uh, say to one of the people that are in your group, here, tap her on the shoulder. Just here, go like that to her, right? Hey, did you hear about the Titanic? And then you just start your new over. Right, we'll get, we'll get into structure very shortly. Dancers, exotic for sure. dancers. For sure, for sure. There's a certain sure. type of, of male character that you, that you can uh, adopt or adapt to adopt in order to attract more likely attract those specific types of girls right like are you guys how are you going to look for the girl you're trying to draw if you're going to try to draw a nine or a ten this look is going to have to look like you're the type of guy that attracts nines and tens mm -hmm. for sure you know that's why i do the black males uh, i've done this well. i cut you off sorry no it's okay i got into the game when i was about 14 years old 
Um, no. I did I did my uh, my first boot camp. I actually came in to take notes for their seminar so that I can convert it into a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I wrote it all out and then pretty much was like, holy shit, like there's a whole world behind something that I thought was like completely fucking normal and just kind of happened and just is how people interacted and all that. And I was coming from a background of like chasing that one girl, like chasing that one girl all the time. Like I left the rose in girls' locker, to, asking them to go to I like homecoming a, and all I that kind a, of nonsense. I have a bad rose experience. Um, I chased I chased one girl for about a year and a half and all this shit. And I was like, man, this is this is some shit. Like, you know, if I can sit here and like learn this and get really good at this, then like all the stuff that's been going on before, even at this age, I don't have to I don't I don't have to experience by the time I'm twenty and, and master this, I'll be fine. So that's what I set out to do. At 14, I pretty much became their, their youngest trainee coach that would tag along and kind of help out at boot camps and, you know, just get a beard. Right. And since then, I've been all around the world. I've been, I've known Eric for over 10 years. We've been all around the world teaching boot camps, helping guys. Amsterdam. Um, uh, to show you there's a certain type of girl that this is, geared for and that we definitely know know how to do it right so you're in good hands with it now the hard part is going to be getting the information from our head into your head and right. so that you can get it into your motor response and actually improve your game and I've done this enough times to know that I've seen improvements in people's games right. which is amazing to see back in the day when guys came to boot camps because they wanted to meet mystery they wanted to meet matador they wanted to you know get their book signed and you know learn a little bit of skill and get their feet wet we could have you know seminar rooms with 60 guys 80 guys 300 guys you know super conferences with thousands of guys in there and it's one thing i prefer this four guys this means set. This, this this is this, this is, is better this, this is, is way better awesome. this allows yeah. us to actually progress and, and get to know each of one one of you guys well you were you were there for the uh israel thing weren't you yeah you see awesome. how big that was it's a different uh, for israel it's pretty big because it's a small country yeah fair here. So yeah. this is I, I love more man intimate. Boot camps. Yeah, I think I they work the stuff. best as far as like results and giving you guys. We will bleed. We'll give you everything on the line. We'll bleed. We'll we'll do. Yeah, everything I'll for give you my best material. For There's sure. no hiding something. As long as long you know? as you guys are are. As long as you use it. That's yeah, it. Exactly. Use it to good health. Get some really beautiful girls in your life. I want to see some pictures, and I'll feel like hey, I did a good job. To the guys yeah. that that I talked to, I I stressed a lot about coming in here and being coachable because. We all come in here with our previous successes, things that we've accomplished, you know, whether it's dating or our work lives or personal lives. And to this this weekend is literally about, as Mystery says all the time, everybody's coming in here with an old, uh, an old hardware and an old software. And it's about getting out that old software, downloading new software, but your hardware is not gonna be able to take that new software uh, power so we have to then focus on developing new hardware so that it matches and stays congruent to this to the software and gets you guys closer mm -hmm. to the target and nothing like repetition to get you faster and faster and more proficient at each set just be willing to do sets That's so it. what I'll say to you, you don't guys have, is and you can go in scared if you if that's what you need to do is if if fear is a part of it yeah. you have permission have permission, give yourself permission to be afraid of the approach. Uh, the hotter the girl is, the, the more I'll fear it. But, uh, you know, tell me more about it. <laughs> this is all my little one-liners. By the way, a neg is, uh, the result of a neg is laughter. So if, you're, if your neg sounds like an insult, right. then it's not a neg. A neg's reaction, the girl should react by laughter. In fact, sets should be maniacally laughing. Mm -hmm. Most of our sets, Jesus. There's something special about when a girl sees that you got her, her friends to laugh at her. Like you got her friends out of their own way, out of their own circle, and now they're kind of laughing at something you said about her. There's like that special magical moment where she See, she like looks around almost, sees her friends laughing, and like attraction starts to fire off. Where right. It's like, this this motherfucker just came in here, just invaded my group, and won over my fucking friends. Mm -hmm. And then there's a there's tension there, and with tension we can progress into attraction. 
So our job for this weekend, in addition to a lot of things, is to focus on this stuff right here. The what. The what is basically the knowledge, right? This is what, this comes down to, you know, what we're gonna say, how we're gonna say it, things like that, right? That's the material. We need material. We're gonna go out there, we're gonna have things to say, we're gonna have Well, things. technically it'll be structure. We're mm -hmm. gonna go over the structure of a pickup because there is structure in pickup. There is a narrative arc from beginning to ending, right? From meat to sex. There is a structure, there are waypoints that need to be met. After structure comes the delivery of that. How are we going to deliver it, right? So delivery plays into it. There's also sets and uh, and the volume and velocity of the sets you do, right? And there's also material, material that fills in the structure to meet the objective of each of the phases. So again, we've got structure, material, sets, how many sets you do, the volume and velocity of those sets, and the delivery of them. And that's what we have to focus on, those four, four key components, because that's it. The, the fifth component happens to be uh, getting instant feedback. If you've got someone to assist you in that, mm -hmm. to come out in field with you and just watch from a distance all night long, right? Every single set and give a little pointer here and there when needed between sets. Yeah. That's it. That's the big massive key that locks in uh, all the others. Mm -hmm. But if you have structure down, if you feel like you know what the next thing you have to do is, and you have material to meet the objective of that phase, right? You'll feel much more confident going in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you've done enough volume and velocity, if you do enough sets so that you're doing a dozen sets a night rather than six, mm -hmm. right? Because the guy who does six sets in one night versus the guy who does two, uh, 12 sets is double, man, or, or is half. Mm -hmm. The six set guy will have to turn to the guy who did 12 sets and say, how did you do it? Yeah. I mean, it may happen tomorrow because I'd love you all to do a dozen sets tonight, but at least do six. Mm -hmm. The yeah. truth of the matter is you're, you're so, when you're first getting good at this, you're so caught up in the moment of in your the head. set, it, being in your own head, being, even if you're not in, in your own head, you've gotten to the next level where you're, you can step outside of your head, you're still so caught up in, in this moment, in that phase, that it's hard for you to really walk away with any learning points from it. It's only after the 10th, 12th set where you're kind of on autopilot, you're in the groove, you don't have to think about the story because it's already flowing out of your tongue that you can notice that when she did her IOI, it made the best friend get a little closer to her. So does that mean that the best friend is feeling a little bit more tension? That means I gotta disarm the obstacle, I gotta disarm the friend, mm -hmm. right? You'll start to you'll, notice the little you'll, subtleties. You'll, look, you'll be out in the game more than in your own head. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Rather than reacting to an emotion that you have, you'll be reacting to It's some, almost some like uh, in the movie where uh, when you're watching a movie and then, you know, like Deadpool and, and he goes, and he looks at the camera and he can step away from being in his own movie. We have yeah. to get good at stepping away from what seems to be very spontaneous interactions and being able to be A, prepared for them. And then not only that, but know how to use it for our advantage in acquiring the phases that we need to get through in order for courtship to happen. Mm -hmm. So for us, I always like to look at it as make people a guest in your reality. When we go out, that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to be a part of their lives. We're not trying to yeah. game them. We're not trying to win them over. We're not trying to make them like us. We're giving them the opportunity to be in our reality. And our reality is fucking awesome. So it's a pleasure for them too. Mm -hmm. And if we can go out with that mentality, that's the attitude that we have, that's the mentality that we have, it puts us in a lot more statistical chance of sets opening when uh, not having to false time constraint verbally, just being able to body rock so that it gets established and you can stay longer. All these little things will start to add more time to you being in set. And if you can add, right, that's what we do. We buy the more time. First, the first three seconds of your engagement, of your interaction, will buy you the next five to 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that five to 10 seconds will buy you the next 30 seconds. And that 30 seconds will buy you the next three minutes. And then when you get into lock-in, and you, and that buys you the next, you know, six minutes. It just keeps more than doubling every time. But it starts with three seconds. Okay. See, I I enjoy these boot camps these days more than ever because when I did my boot camp, uh, it wasn't structured. It was like matador, mystery, and uh, love drop. Just 
sat you in a room and they just talked to you and that was that. You took some notes maybe, you just yeah. took it all in and then you went out, you know, you got some feedback and that was that. But yeah. these days we're a lot more structured, we have components, we have certain things in, that we embed throughout our lessons and certain exercises that we'll do to prepare you guys so that it gives you the most viable chance of actually getting results. Because that's what we realized and that's what a lot of companies haven't caught up with is that you guys are gonna go off after this to, you're gonna go home and you're gonna have to game and you're gonna have to be able to use this stuff. And but if you can't do what you were doing with us while you were here back home, this is a waste, it's, it's, right. it means nothing. So like I said before, beyond the whole birthday feeling of, you know, let's just show you a good time, this is really about establishing some real life skill sets that are gonna go on to be utilized, not just with girls, but in your life as men, you know, with other men and other people and girls that you're not interested in, but that you still have to keep uh, in your life for some capacity, you know? And, and, and this will transcend to a lot more than just girls. I, I can appreciate, um, Pick up because see I I am I'm, I'm a bit torn with the industry uh, I mean, I've always been which is why I've always my decision to stay under the radar was was one that I took very early on it's because I saw a lot of dysfunction in this I saw a lot of guys exploiting other guys in this I saw a lot of companies that their coaches just learn and memorize the book and take a boot camp and all of a sudden that they're coaching and they don't really have any coaching background like I love this I think that. What we do here has an opportunity to change a lot of people. And not only, see, I do this for to help you guys, but I also do it to help the fucking girls that are out there that, you know, are getting approached by guys in weird ways and feeling threatened and, and guys that are aggressive and guys that are touchy and guys that are creepy. And I do it so that we can set the merit a little bit more high for ourselves and a little bit more high for other guys to get better so that the girls have a more viable chance. See, for us to find a girl, the criteria, the list that we put out, even the most extensive guys list is very short. You know, for a girl to find a guy that she can actually hang with, that values her, that keeps her in, in his eye the way that she wants him to, that's a fucking, oh, it's like, it's hard. It's, I always tell girls, I feel, I feel bad for you guys. I feel bad that you have to date so much to find just something that kind of just works until something doesn't work and then you move on or something better comes along and that's how most girls do it they're with the guy because that's it that's all that was there it wasn't like you know she's happy to be with that guy it's just that guy was the one that was better out of the other guys which is why we can't feel apologetic right about anything because if you've worked on yourself you guys paid good money to be here you guys have you know six months from now put in the time the effort the you know the sacrifice that it takes to get to the skill set, why do we have to feel bad by injecting ourselves into someone's life and showing them another side of humanity that isn't mundane or robotic or just common? There's nothing to feel sorry for that. And I always tell guys, it's like, oh, you know, what's your opener? Oh, I really don't have an opener. I kind of just go situational. Okay, cool. What's your, uh, what's your DHV story? Well, I kind of just talk about, you know, like what's going on in my day. All right. Uh, what's a neg that you use? Oh, I got like 50 negs. And it's like, <laughs> of course you got 50 negs. Cause you're like trying to get back something that was lost either through rejection or through denial or whatever it is. You're trying to get back at women. It's hard. It's hard because as soon as you get a little bit good in this, you realize that shit, I, I can, it's as easy as just saying it. As long as I say it and I say it the right way, this happens. So it gets very easy to where a lot of pickup guys, they'll, you know, they'll get the, the, the PUA high, which is like, they go around and they just like, you know, try to just say whatever and be bravado and be male and be this and be alpha and convey your, your sexuality and all this shit. And it's like, where, where is the class and where is the elegance that's needed for the higher value girls that we really want? You know, we're going after some girls in the club, some girl that's just there, she's, you know, 24, she's got nowhere to go other than that club, and that's what, how she lives? Fair, do your thing. At the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, and this is a question I'm gonna ask yourself early on in the game, so that you guys lose a lot, a lot of uh, uh, time. Uh, so you don't lose a lot of time in this game, which is, what kind of girl do you want? And that's not a question for you to answer right now. That's a question for more for you to think about throughout this weekend yeah. is what kind of girls do you want? Because you're going to have to answer that question very clear. And the clearer you can answer that question, 
the better you can situate yourself, your identity, the way you look, your game, to yeah. get those types of girls in your life. If you're telling me, hey, I want some fitness girl that does yoga and is really into rock climbing, but you're going to the high energy clubs at four in the morning trying to find that girl, I'm gonna tell you that's you're gonna you're gonna do that for a while. You know? Now yeah. if you can find yourself into, you know, some recreational class at a gym that has, you know, rock climbing, whatever, that's more statistical chance. Right. But you're not gonna know where to go. You're not gonna go to go to the Equinox as opposed to Planet Fitness, which is the different gyms in, in, in America. If you focus on the skill, you'll realize that as you get better with the skills, your result of women will just be a, a, a kind of a indirect result of effect. those skills. It's a side effect, it's, it's, one of, it's, it's that route. So if we focus on ourselves, if we focus on our skills, if we focus on how we're saying things, what we're saying, all these kind of entities, we present our best selves to people. It gives us a way better chance than to just be the normal guy. Now, there's ways of doing this. You can you know, grab the stuff that you learn here, go home, you know, go out once a week, go out once a month, you know, drag it out over years and do it that way or you can do it fast, right? And that's kind of the question you guys have to ask yourself is whether you guys want to grow slow or if you guys want to grow fast. Right now, after this weekend, during this weekend, momentum. it's about momentum. The reason that you're having your whole up and down phase of it works, it doesn't work, is because you're not really building momentum. You're just, you're, you're working it, you're, you're grinding. To build the momentum, to have that success it's assist you in the next success and then have you know, this set assists you in this set. This set from this night assists you in tomorrow's night. Tomorrow's night assists you in the end of the month party, right? Whether you're coming down, you know, to Toronto from, yeah. from where you're coming from or whether you're meeting up with a group of guys and you guys are gonna get a table at the hot spot where all the fucking tens are, you know? It, 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 it may be that way, but it's about getting that 80% in right now so that it really gets the ball rolling Another in your skill. Yeah, it is. Location, location, location. It's really important where you go, where you live, yeah. how close you live to the uh, nightclub environment, or I'm not out to make you nightclubbers, any public gathering that has a tar a target, that is a target rich environment, right? Uh, location's important, but if you just focus on location, then when you finally get there, you won't have the skill set to actually do anything about the fact that there are hot girls around, right? right? So yes, it's important to get there, but our focus will be on the actual skills necessary to get the girls in the future. It won't even be about getting the girls tonight. Right. It'll be about getting the material out because we need that material for the really hot set that's gonna happen on, on the I would, I would advise against it highly this weekend. You can get stuck in a, in get a, stuck in a, set, in a set. And then you're getting in at six in the morning because you've been you know, going to diners and then you got laid maybe. Yeah, but then, okay. if it's good, work it. Work the work set. It. Right. We're, we're there, we're, you know, watching from a distance. Yeah, that's my boy. That's oh, it. Yeah. yeah. But I would, yeah. I would struggle with like it won't happen. What'll happen is, let's do lots of sets. Right. Let's merge the sets. How many sets do you guys open on any given night? Just curious. Zero. One, okay. one two, oh, zero, man. fair. Okay. I would say, I would say tonight, um, given, you know, any sets, and again, we're not particularly picking the hot sets. We're picking sets where there's girls in it. Right. And we're gonna interact and shoot the shit. And it's about us right now. Yeah. It's not about them. It's, not about it's about them. our material. So it doesn't matter which set we run our material on. Yeah. These are practice sets. You're gonna appreciate all the practice sets when the hobby comes. I get thankful. I used to. Uh, my mentality used to always be like, uh, a few times. I feel sorry for them, right? I used to when I was first getting into it. I was like, I feel so bad for you. You gotta go through all these stupid, like these whack openers, all these stupid yeah. deliveries. Like, but it's not really about you. It's about me. Like, yeah. I need to do this. You're the casualty. You're here. You're gonna go. You're gonna hear this story. You're the that's, casualty. You're gonna, you're gonna yeah. hear this story that's delivered terribly, but then it's gonna help me with the next yeah. one. So you're just gonna have to stand here and do it. And that's how I've, I've always looked at it that way. Every it's like, new it's piece not about you. Every new piece of material has to go through yep. this, yep. this uh, yep. congruence phase yeah. where what you say and how you say it are incongruent they don't make sense it, it sounds like you're scripting it yeah you know they'll I say that never, i've never in my life have gotten are you a pickup guy are you a are you a but seduction coach i've never gotten that because and i do this shit for a living bro yeah because you're hanging out with the others <laughs> I guess. You know why you're getting that? Because you guys are rolling in seduction community style, which is probably like more than three dudes, all kind of fucking talking it out. I want solo 
Yeah, <laughs> you can see it. You can see it. You're the guy that's just going around and trying. Next set. Yeah. You're Next trying. Set. Next you got your dick in your hand and you're like, hey, you want this? No? <laughs> All right. No? You want this? Hey, just check it. What about you? Just check it. I didn't say you could have it. <laughs> what, you want? Oh, no. Okay, no, you can't have it. Well, there's, there's direct game. <laughs> and then there's indirect game. Indirect game gives you more maneuverability. It lets, lets you work sets with yeah. men in them. Why? Because right. if you come direct, you're, you're telling them, here, judge me based on my value as you see me right now. Now look, if you've got your look together, you've got some pre-selection, you've, you've downloaded and uploaded some uh, uh, attraction values and things like that, Okay, direct could work, right? You got some pre-selection, you're standing by the bar, you look cool, girls right here, proximity, hi, that works. Yeah, I can already say, is there more to you than ETI? I can already start right. in, well, in, qualify, qualify. in qualification. But if you don't have that and you're going in and you're like, you know, super direct, does it work? Yeah, if how she, if she sees you and you're like, yeah, this packaging is perfect for what I want, direct. Yeah, you remind work. me of my old cousin exactly. I had a crush on. Exactly. If that, ha if that happens, then exactly. by all means. But most Don't likely, that, that you're, you're, really you're shooting yourself in the leg with, you know, because here's the thing, the truth of the matter is, what just like us, what a girl finds attractive to what she thinks she finds attractive may sometimes not go hand in hand. And we can all say, oh yeah, we want the supermodels, we want this, that, and other. But some hot girl that's not a supermodel comes in our lives and she's cool, we're totally down to hang with her. Girls are the same way. She can tell herself, you know what, I'm really into guys that are 6'2 plus, that have abs and tattoos, and that have blonde frosted tips. If I go direct, she's gonna look at me, she's like, okay, he's not 6'2, doesn't have abs, doesn't have tattoos, fuck him. Is yeah. that frosted tips? Another hat? No? Yeah, <laughs> fuck them. You know? But if I go in and I go in with an indirect opener, you guys see the girls fighting outside? Holy shit, these two girls were fighting outside over a guy. We talked to him afterwards. Yeah. What was his name? Jorge. What was his name? Jorge. I asked him, how do you spell that? He goes, G E O R G E. I'm like, it's fucking George. That's, That's George. George. That's not a brain. Who fights over a guy named George? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm getting laughter. It's, she's out of her way now. Now all of a sudden it's like, okay, let's 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 see what this guy's got. And as long as I can keep buying more time and doing my stuff, all of a sudden attraction can be established. And now she's finding herself attracted to me, and we're off. Like a comedian, before he does his performance, the audience doesn't know who he is. So a comedian can't be pissed off that, you know, oh man, this whole audience loves the comedian that was on before me. Well, yeah, because he already did his shtick. So you're gonna have to do your shtick yeah. to the next set. And hopefully that material is going to captivate. At least stimulate, if not captivate, captivating the whole group where you have everybody, hey, 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 you can't get this. And you're telling them a story like this. See, now I can, this is, this is how you captivate, yeah. right? But if you're not captivating and you're just stimulating, like we're doing when we're leaning back and, and talking, uh, that at least captures uh -huh. their attention, right? We wanna capture their attention and run the set and so you're gonna to have to fill that timeline with material. It's we need 40 minutes of material. That's that's the game plan here. Is yep. let's get let's find out who we are, or at least who we want to pretend to be for the next set, right? right? Know your identity and convey it in a very slick amount of time, in a, in a in a short amount of time, so that we can get that part over with and then get back to them chasing us.